What is up, you guys? Um, how's that Manic Monday going for everybody? Uh, you're probably seeing this on Totally Tuesday. I'm just getting in from work. I actually just had to sit here and, uh, and just chill for a second. It was such a crazy weekend. And there's a full moon tomorrow. And it's in Virgo. And I'm already feeling this chaotic, like, Virgo strikes back energy. <laughs> like, the systems, like, since the wind came and blew really hard the other day and that windstorm here, like, there's still, like, areas of town that don't have power. And our power never officially went off all the way, but I think it might have flickered just enough for, like, our systems to, like, be all awry. And so, like, I don't know, all the computers aren't communicating right and like the kitchen tickets are like printing out in other parts of the restaurant the bar tickets are pr printing out in other parts of the restaurant and so they were all trying to figure that out tonight and then we've had just like the craziest insane like guests coming through like there was an arrest I think Saturday last night this girl said she's about to throw up at the table and I was like well I'm just gonna walk away and let you collect yourself and I'm just thinking like get up and go to the bathroom then like what the fuck is wrong with people <laughs> tonight every single guest I had was so extra and so hard to please and then the people that were easy to please they were just like wanting to really ham it up with me and like a, like to a neediness level where I'm just like can you just let me be <laughs> just let me wait on you and get through this because I've had so many shifts I'm like manically insane and I'm going to kill you. I am going to kill you with a knife. Um, oh my God. So yeah, so I just had to sit here and like be insane for a minute and try to get less insane. <laughs> and we're here. I'm so excited and like the messages today. And then I had an epiphany about a, a message in retrospect from last week that I thought was crazy. So I just started to do our blog this morning, which by the way, um, if you want to see these messages ahead of when we talk about them in our videos, I write them and post them on Instagram on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like middle of the day. And so you can follow me there at Liz underscore Taylor underscore magic. Um, I think that there is a, a link to that in the description box where you could just go straight there if you want. But well, not until after you watch this video though, <laughs> all the way to the end. Um, yeah, so I I got lost in my Oh yeah, so anyway, I was writing the the blog this morning and there was so much to say that like I lost enough space in like the amount of characters that I could use, but I was also running out of time because I needed to get to work and I had slept late later than usual because I was so tired from the weekend. And then the full moon workshop is tomorrow and I like I need to get up and like set up the house to do that Build the set and like read up on the astrology and notes and everything and I'm just like ah But it's good busy. It's very exciting um, And it's good things. So I'm happy. I'm grateful But let's talk about the reading because there were so many different layers going on that I didn't even like I could barely get around to it I think I mostly just focused on one card so definitely read the description box below. I've included the actual text um, that I wrote out this morning. So I would suggest like reading that because it's gonna be probably another facet of this message that I may not go into as much depth verbally. Um, but I want to read from the archetypes deck for our archetypes cards. And then we'll circle back or around at some point and like talk about the crazy global events that were in last week's messages that I, I didn't pick up on because I'm not usually thinking about that. Like there are so many times that the global events that are happening are in the readings, but they're so like big that I don't think to go there. Like, um, I, so in our photo a few weeks ago, it was a prophecy, um, like pre uh, predicting the announcement of Giselle's divorce to like, uh, what's his face, the football player. And I was like, whoa, no way. And then also um, 
the uh, the images and the cards predicted the death of Queen Elizabeth. And, like, also it was, like, in sort of the cartoon of my story. And I didn't even know it until after the fact. I was like, oh, my God, that's so crazy. And then the cards were also, like, a couple of years ago predicting, like, the big tornado that came through here and um, the pandemic. <laughs> And I kept saying, like, something huge is about to happen, you guys. Like, I don't know what it is. It's something big. And then it was 2020 through 2022. <laughs> so we had another one um, for last week, from last week's anchor message. But put a pin on that. Or put a pin in it. <laughs> Gathering myself. Okay, we're going to do this. So this week's anchor message... And so the anchor message anchors the week. It's like the themes that we're going to be, that we work with through the week. These are like the lessons in soul school, if you will. It's like our, our assignments, our curriculum. Um, the energy forecast for the week is what I do on Sundays. And that is sort of like the projection of like what the energy weather is going to be like. But then like the anchor message for Monday is like, these are the themes and the lessons for the week. So right now we're doing our anchor message is we've got the lover from the Wild Unknown Archetypes. We've got the medallion, which we've had recently um, come up a couple of times. So the medallion is back. And then the king is back. The kings have been showing up in the tarot and in this deck um, throughout the last several weeks. So the king is back. These themes... They are building towards, I don't know, big things happening. I feel things brewing. Um, and then underneath the lovers, we have three of cups. Underneath the medallion, we have ace of cups. And underneath the king, we have the feminine king of wands. Okay, so overall, I feel like Pisces has been like going into the depths and pushing up any leftover like limiting beliefs, old um, emotional wounds that have been sort of buried away for so long that they're still kind of affecting us, but we don't even realize it anymore. Um, you know, distant things that were implanted um, from, you know, early childhood family dynamics and traumas, you know, all of those things that, you know, maybe we have work, been working on and coming to our awareness, like we've gone deep, deep, deep to really get to the root of it. And so all of it's been coming up in layers of themes over the past couple of weeks, and it's been culminating in Pisces. And so I feel Especially with this full moon, we're going to be able to release so much that it's already coming up to be released. But we are really turning a corner and feeling this lightness begin to come back little by little. Like right now, like today, right now, I feel like the, 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 the sweater is getting frayed. <laughs> like these people tonight, they just, they just took that string. <laughs> they just started unwinding the sweater. Then I'm like, you know what? I'm willing to give up the sweater. Another layer of my te negativity gone, released. That which did not kill me tonight made me stronger. But I did say at work, I was like, okay, I feel like I'm just willing to be strong enough now to just risk it with whatever else comes. Like, I just like, can we stop the training to like get stronger and stronger and just like, just see, just see if we can coast for a while. <laughs> my current strength, please. So yeah, so with this lover's card or the lover card and the three of cups and the ace of cups, like I'm just feeling this, this renewal of spirit, that surge of spring energy is in the air and we've offloaded so much of this emotional baggage and purging that we're just like, oh, it's freed up so much of our energy and it's broken so many chains and we're so much more buoyant to float higher and ascend 
beyond like those dense, shadowy, murky, muddy waters. So very excited about that. Um, and I feel like this medallion is another point that it's like we've hit a turning point. Um, to me, the medallion um, is kind of a, re it's related to the talisman to me. And just as far as like kind of the, the universe kind of giving you like that token of completion of a certain level of um, challenge and growth. And so, yeah, so I feel like this sort of excitement for life is coming back. Our hearts are kind of opening back up again. We're ready to celebrate again. Uh, the Three of Cups talks about celebrating. It talks about celebrating like graduations. Um, the medallion, right? That token of completion. We're celebrating this graduation. We're feeling this romance for life again. This, I don't know, I'm almost feeling like the universe has been romancing me recently. It's almost like, you know, as a mystic, you almost think of the divine as, as, a, as a lover, right? As a partner that you're coming into union, union with more than an authority figure, you know? So I think that in a way we're starting to feel an excitement for life. Life is sweeping us off our feet and we're starting to get to the point where we feel enough trust to trust the universe when things are a little bit challenging or uncertain because we're starting to feel like it's playing with us now more than it's preying on us. And so that shift in the way that we're interacting um, with life is, is, is changing the quality of the energy we're in and, the, and our mindset all the time, right? We're not as guarded. We're not trying to survive. We're playing, you know, we've, we're, we're, I like the, these hula hoops, the way that they're interlocked together. I just, I saw them in their, their close inner circle, right? And the people who are tight knit, you know, the, those that are close to you, your kindreds, that's your, they're drawing near and all the ways that your paths interlock together. It's like, it's all starting to blossom in positive ways, you know, because we've gotten, we've been able to let go of so many of the toxic influences and things and jobs and people and things that just weren't in alignment, right? And and now that we are, what we're left with after we've trimmed the fat and like been able to let go of things that just weren't, they didn't want to be in our field anymore. Um, we've allowed it to go and now what's left is like, it's good stuff. It's like the good people you want to get together with and inspire you and have fun with and the ideas that have stuck and the passions that you still have that you're really into, the interests that you are wanting to put your focus in anymore. You know, you've let go of a lot of old ideas that you just weren't really wanting to put that effort in any, into, in, into anymore. And it's just allowing you so much more space in your heart and in your mind and w within your mundane life to have so much more fun and be so much more inspired and really devote yourself to those things and get the fullness out of it, right? So yeah, Three of Cups talks about celebrating, um, getting together with friends. A lot of times I literally meet up with a couple of close friends when, when, this, cup, uh, when this card comes up. Sorry, I'm like nonverbal. I'm so tired right now. Um, yeah, and then it talks about engagements um, and pregnancies and birth announcements. And so, again, it's just that symbol where there's a lot to celebrate. You know, we've completed one stage and new stages are starting, right? We're pregnant with new ideas. We're about to give birth to new experiences. And the goals that we've been working on, they're, they're about to start blossoming, right? And so it's a time to celebrate and to be happy and to have fun um, and to, you know, not take it all so seriously. I like that this medallion is like this beacon of light within the darkness, right? It's like this darkness was that magic dark that we were talking about the other day that they talk about in To Be Magnetic. It's like that, that divine fog, that, that 
that divinely ordained uncertainty where you cut your teeth, where you learn how to stand in certainty even when it's not given to you easily, right? And what that is, that's a Hebrew word, um, emuna, and that is faith beyond reason. The ability to grow a faith that and a trust that's so strong that you can see that all the odds are against you and that it looks pretty bleak, but like you know that no matter how poorly things might be playing out, that the creator, as long as you keep reaching for the light, you keep having faith that God is in all things, even um, can use when when the devil's against you and when your demons are plaguing you. God can turn it around with you using your faith as the fuel. God can turn that around and make them pawns and servants to you and completely foil their schemes and actually use them to exalt you and get you a further step ahead. So the secret sauce, though, is your faith, right? Faith the size of mustard seeds can move mountains. But we have free will, and we've been put here with the purpose of building this vessel, right? Creating a vessel that can um, contain the light. And part of that vessel is trust, is faith, right? The faith to keep the vessel strong, unwavering, you know, not going to crack, right? You have the strength and the, um, the wherewithal. And so you, you, you choose to pause and instead of being reactive and going down that spiral of fear and lack and doubt and then reacting, you know, from a sense of panic, you're able to sit in that uncertainty and that darkness and choose to know that the divine spark of the creator is within all things. And that it's like magic. The moment that we believe in it and we're certain in it and we choose to be certain in it. No matter what the external, elusive, like, material world is showing you, that's all an illusion. You have to see through that illusion and be blind to the outer world so that you can see the inner world, which is the real truth. Many of the sages, the prophets, had experiences with blindness. Or later on in their life, they became blind, people in the Bible. And it's because they got to a certain point of enlightenment where it was either the lesson that they were being taught or the realization that they came to that there was no reason that they needed to see the outer world because it was the in, it was the intrinsic that was creating the outer world and the outer world can only show them confusion and fear and all that fear does is plant seed levels of destruction right because we're co-creators and we're creating from the intrinsic so if you blind yourself to what looks negative and you choose the kingdom within, peace, certainty. I am a co-creator with divine, and the moment I believe that and know that the divine creator is in control, it activates. It activates the spark in everything around. But think of it as dormant, right? Because the, the assignment, the game, the rules of the game are rigged to where it's up to you to activate that spark with your certainty, with your faith with your knowing beyond hope, right? And that's, you know, our inheritance as divine beings, right? Um, but it's also, it's up to us to choose that, to choose to do that in any given moment because we have free will. So, yeah, the medallion. It's like we're in this, this, avatar almost that we're learning how we can really interact with it and really shape it you know and and do it alongside the creator because we don't want to manipulate it on our own we can't see the full picture and our energy our vessel isn't completely purified so what we put our hand to it it's not going to be perfect it's going to be like faulty and cause chaos or corruption or have cracks in it right so that's why we want to co-create with divine because god can see what's going to give us the ultimate greatest fulfillment and the path of the most ease and like 
fulfillment to get there with just the right challenges that really give make it a big adventure and all that stuff. It's just that we don't trust that path or we can't, we, we're not great at tuning into what it is all the time. So it's like we get, you know, in turbulence and, you know, we get sent and rerouted and we have challenges, right? But if we can trust, like we can be re-corrected, course corrected, the universe is self-correcting when we surrender, right? Surrender isn't about um, being subservient to the authority figure. It's about letting go and letting the current of the river take you so that you can just ride along in peace and ease and enjoy the scenery. It's really more about that. And the more we realize that, the more we have this awakening of this new sense of spiritual renewal and hope and joy, which is the Ace of Cups. It's like, oh, it's new love. It's springtime. It's feeling like... Oh, you know, when you get those like nice days, like, and it's been winter and you just feel like alive and you want to run around like in the sound of music and everything's great. It's kind of what we're starting to feel like again. And having all of these realizations is allowing all of that to be like, wow, my mindset about everything that I've ever feared about God, I, I can kind of tweak it and it's like I'm, I'm in awe and I, I'm, I'm God fearing because I know the capacity and I know that like sometimes like I am required to go through challenges even for my own good. So that scares the shit out of me too. But for the most part, I'm in awe because everything is set up to really give me the most joy and happiness, right? So you can trust, you can surrender, you're in good hands. There's nothing to be scared of. Um, and that's why I feel, I feel like it's so unfortunate, you know, when I talk to people and, and it seems like their beliefs and their religion is really just based on the fact that they're afraid of what happens if they don't comply. And I'm like, oh man, you're not even feeling the love of God. <laughs> you don't even know the love of Jesus. You haven't even had it because you're, you're just afraid of getting smouted. <laughs> that's not it. And it's so much easier than you think. I mean, it's always challenging. It really is. Um, but it, we're not being punished and we're not doomed to suffer in misery. Um, we're like our potential and like our purpose is leading us to an absolute joy and, being able to express our passions and talents in, in the world that were given to us specifically for a reason. And all the experiences that we've gone through have um, given us a unique skill set and a, a way to, like a technique with our skills and our perceptions and our insights, right? And so now it's like we're finally, we've finally gotten all that darkness out of the way so that we can really be connected um, with that, with the beauty of it all. And when you feel, like when you're in resonance with cosmic beauty and you feel moved by the depth and beauty of life and the way it's playing out, it's like you're in vibration with beauty. And beauty just begins to unfold. And, and, and beauty begets more beauty. And then you're in a state of appreciation. And appreciation is so powerful because it reinforces the fact that you're certain. You have so much faith that you, you can appreciate everything that's working out. It's like the, two of the most powerful uh, vibrational emotions that you can have is appreciation and certainty. So yes, the just seeing the beauty of it all is, is just great. Um, and then we are, we've got King here. And the king is interesting because the king, like, as a human being, has to walk this fine line of being benevolent and just and fair and wanting to be a good leader, a compassionate leader, a generous leader, a merciful leader, someone who inspires unity and inclusivity and um, enough to go around and taking good care. But the king can quickly accidentally slip into being controlling or um, wanting to 
even sometimes being well-meaning, wanting to like cross a line um, that's corrupt to like push their agenda, right? Anything at all costs, right? Um, an abuse of power or like manipulative or controlling. Um, I, I'll read it in the book, but for the most part, which I think that on a global sense, we, we've been kind of picking up on those themes this week because circling back to that whole global thing that I was picking up on in hindsight about last week, we had the feminine king of swords underneath the masculine king of swords. And then that was next to the Hierophant and something else. And I remember just thinking that something about and playfulness. And so there has been a drag drag show ban um, to a certain degree in Tennessee this past week. And I think, I don't know, maybe it's been talked about in other states or around the country, but other people around the country are talking about this drag ban. And it doesn't, it's, it's been made to seem like it's not that big of a deal because it's like, oh, well, it's just now confined to like 18 and up places. But the thing is, it's that it's in, it's encroaching on freedom of speech because there's nothing about drag that's sexually explicit that would be like not okay for someone to see if it's not okay to go see like, uh, like just like a concert <laughs> or like the theater or just someone pointed out like cheerleaders at an NFL game, you know? So it's like, that was coming up. It's like literally the feminine kings were at odds with the traditional harsh king of swords because the king of swords um, not only is talking about the mastery, like the kings are like the mastery of the element. So the king not only masters like the um, the element of thought and like the in the mind, like mind over matter, or like being bringing peace to your mind, your mental landscape. But they also many times the king of swords represents authority figures, particularly in the government. So it's like I wouldn't have known, but like because I, I didn't know about all this in the news. But like it's literally like the the drag queens against the traditional kings, like the like the toxic masculine side of patriarchy, like and butting heads with the hierophant, like the organizations and systems, and like based on religious like you know traditions and everything. It was so crazy. It's all coming up. So I feel like in some ways there's hints of this still going on this week. Um, because the, the king of wands, the feminine king of wands is back again. Um, and I think that too, a lot of the zeitgeist this week has been really, um, showing a lot of support for the LGD, LGBTQ, sorry, I'm so tongue tied, LGBT, the whole rainbow community. And I'm sorry, I can't say it right now. And, um, people have really been speaking out and really being very clear about the greater message about protecting the integrity of the constitution and standing up against hypocrisy because people have been calling out the whole thing about the whole gun control thing. It's like, if you're so concerned about protecting kids, then the number one threat against children in this country is guns. And most of the time, we're not even trying to ban firearms. We're just trying to make it a little bit more strict on the ability to obtain them. Like, for instance, in Tennessee, it's perfectly legal for me to just meet up with someone from the Internet and go buy a gun out of the trunk of their car at Walmart. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> That's a little bit too lax, I think. I'm pretty liberal. Like... Liberal on both, like, I'm about civil liberties, right? And, you know, that sometimes includes, you know, both sides for their civil liberties. But even I am like, yeah, maybe there should be more paperwork involved and, like, maybe a slower process in obtaining firearms. Like, you know, maybe a little bit of a background check. Make sure you're not just, like, giving this to someone who's mentally unstable. You know, have them maybe, like, on paper somewhere, like, with a permit and like some kind of like uh, a proof that they're you know competent at using this dangerous deadly weapon like <laughs> just basics 
So yeah, people have been calling them out about that. But people have also been um, trying to be, a lot of people have been trying to be compassionate. Like Jonathan Van Ness was like, we do not answer hate with hate. We, we continue to remain compassionate and loving. And this is about unconditional love. And boy, that, that, that's just amazing to me that in a way it sucks that these people, these, the, these per people who are throwing hate and, and, and trying to control people and putting all of their focus and effort into nitpicking things that they have a personal problem with instead of actually ad addressing violent crime in this country or like um, sex offenders and things like that. Um, it's like very upsetting. But then at the same time, it's very heartening t for me to see that as a the greater part of the population is seeing that you can't just keep fighting fire with fire. Eventually, people just have to love each other and choose unity. Um, even when people are throwing hate at them, um, it's the only way to just like transmute that darkness you can't keep throwing it back and forth because it gets harder and it gets denser and it gets heavier and it turns into cannonballs bullets turn into cannonballs all right and so underneath the king we have the feminine king of wands and so one of the things that i've been really liking about the feminine king of wands in this deck I was sort of like, I didn't get it because I mean, I I did see that there were benefits to having like that character, but I just wasn't fully understanding the purpose of going ahead and having like a feminine king of kings. And, and if we're doing like gender, gender equality, would there not be like masculine queens? But then I realized it wasn't about that. And I don't even know if the artist realized that. But it's actually specifically this way for a reason. And they may not have even realized it. So the universe is broken into two pieces. Like the reality that we live in, the physical reality, is a dualistic reality made of two parts. But the non, like before this existence, everything is one. And so it's a uni unilateral, unified, one, one reality, one thing. But here we're, we have dualism, right? So everything is made of light, which is the light of the creator, and vessel. The vessel to receive the light, to contain the light. And so... That the vessel is a feminine energy and the light is a masculine energy. The masculine light is a is a, a force of sharing, and the feminine um, energy is a force of receiving. And so the holy divine union of divine masculine and divine feminine. Because when we talk about um, the tree of life. All of the dimensions of consciousness and the Godhead are, they alternate between masculine and feminine energy. Like they have their core native energies and there's mixtures across the tree. But every time the energy goes from one, like the light of the creator bounces through each level um, of each dimension before it, it's finally received in the physical reality. And so each time light is going into vessel, right? And then vessel is sharing with the next vessel and the next vessel is sharing with the next vessel and everything that is coming before it is contained in what is being passed on. So the fullness of the light of God has been passed through every level and it's being paid forward to the next. So that process is the vessel becoming per per uh, perfected. And so one of the main purposes of our lives as souls here on earth is to protect the or is to perfect the vessel. And what that means is we are becoming a vessel 
that can transcend the body's consciousness and desire to receive for the self alone, to take, to have for the self, for survival, right? So we're transcending the desire to receive for the self alone, but we're becoming a vessel that, because you have to have desire. Desire fuels everything. But we have been perfect, perfected into a vessel that has a desire to receive for the sake of sharing. And so this feminine king is now a feminine vessel who has mastered a, the kingship of sharing in the highest form, even transcended the status of king alone, right? Because the king alone still has the ego intact that can, that can tempt the king into that shadow side of domineering, of controlling, of abusive power, right? As we see this week. But the king who has come into divine union within the self, within the spirit and the soul, is also united in his divine masculine and the divine feminine has come into union like this Merkaba sea. It's an, it's an upright and an inverted triangle married as equals. The divine masculine and the divine feminine in one. In that internal union with divine, so that their spirit, their soul, their heart is aligned with Christ conscious, you know, it's all aligned with source. And they can now, um, they've had the, they've experienced a level of ego death so that they can now receive for the sake of sharing. And they can restrict the body's consciousness and desire to only receive for the self, to only think about the self. But now we can think about the grander scheme, and think about the, the highest good of all, right? So now we are a vessel that can receive for the sake of sharing, sharing the light. Do you see how her wand that she holds is now overflowing with the spark, with the light of divine? She is radiant in that. The bloom of the rose of, of cosmic beauty is behind her, and she is like draped and clothed in red and passion. The wand's suit is all about passion and your sense of spiritual um, trust and hope and perseverance and your level of certainty. It's your grit. It's your moxie. It's your passion. It's your go get em, you know? Um, it's that, um, scrappiness, you know, that willingness to fight for what you believe in and go after what you want. It's your sense of industry, but it's also your sense of self and self-esteem. And, you know, it, re it reflects your spiritual practice and your spiritual relationship with the divine. And so that's very exciting that all of this is lining up the way that it is. Um, it's like this huge internal shift and this huge internal fusion within us where we can really start to see things at a new level and start to be able to take on more because we want to be a greater vessel for the light. And we can tolerate the things that are happening because we can see how they're playing out like for the uh, for the for the fulfillment of the light like today this lady was so difficult at my final table and i just i just tried to continue to take good care of her take care of everybody at the table and i literally the table started advocating for me they started coming up to me outside of like they would leave the patio and come up and be like oh my god Oh my God, we're so sorry. Like, she does this all the time. It's not you. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> They're like, we can't imagine how, how irritating this must be. They're like, you're like showing so much patience under pressure. And I'm like, just thinking like, just don't be reactive. Just continue. Because this is all, this can all play out for me in the end. And even at the end, when she was like coming up and trying to complain about something else, 
and trying to get something taken off her check and really there was nothing wrong with it. My managers were just like, just don't unless like the person who's actually paying is it's like a business dinner, unless they say something. She came and found me and was like, you didn't take it off her check. I was like, it was a management decision. Like I'll go see what they want to do. Like just, just give me a minute. I'm gonna have to like take, rerun the credit card and all that. So I'm like, she's going to the bathroom. I'm like going back to the table. They're like coming to get me. They're like, don't, just, just leave it on. Just forget. Don't listen to her. Like, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, and they ended up like not, they were fine. Like they tipped appropriately and everything, but it was just like, that's how it can turn it around. Like had I been a sourpuss and started getting really like, I don't know if I would have had the grace, you know, with in favor from those people, but I did. So <laughs> thank God. And, and it went the way it did, but you know, that's just why you just kind of like in these moments where we're so tempted to just blow a gasket. Um, and I'm just going to wrap this up, try to wrap that up, this up quicker. I'm going to read the cards. I also think that too, so there was another thing that I wanted to say that we've gone deep, we've gone uh, global, and then the mundane message here in our, like, just like the little tea, the little hot scoop, little hot goss, there may be new love coming in. I mean, it's, it's in the cards, people. We've got the lover with the three of cups. This is about celebrating. This is like, ooh, dating, going out, having fun. You know, it's not necessarily engagement, but it's like getting in, engaging more in your love life, right? Going out, like going on dates, like doing fun things, being adventurous. New love coming in, being adventurous, having a new excitement in your life. Um, lovers that may be like, trading, flirting, and, you know, swapping things back and forth, leaving little things here and there, charming each other, whatnot. Um, and then, again, last week we had the King of Swords with the Feminine King of Swords, and we were talking about that being, like, it's, like, even more than the King of Swords and the Queen of Swords together. Like, all of these court cards aren't necessarily traditionally married, but sometimes it's, you can kind of interpret that as them being like paired up um, and, and like as pairs, as partners. And so even beyond like the kind of pairing where like the King of Swords and the Queen of Swords would be like a good match, you know, they'd be like people who have things in common. But like the King of Swords with the feminine King of Swords is like two individuals that are seriously equally yoked with like a, like a divine blessing. And again, we have that kind of showing up because we didn't have like an overabundance of tarot cards this time, but with the king here and this like fire all behind it, this is very king of wandsy. The fact that the, this king has a wax seal here um, next to the medallion goes even deeper into the whole token thing and like something about like a seal, like a wax seal of approval We've got the the pearl here um, about like wisdom and Sophia and all of that. And so the king of the feminine king of wands next to the king of wands here, like there's something about coming through the experience, right? Um, all of the experience leading up till now, it's like the development of the ability to have next level relationships with again, someone that you're equally yoked with in spirit and faith, as well as last week when we were talking about like intellectual equals. So be on the lookout this spring, you might be um, meeting someone new, a little hottie, hottie patati maybe. Um, okay, so I wanna read you the descriptions for the um, archetypes. We'll start with the lover. Sorry, this is like a 45 minute video already. Um, let's see, the heart, the beloved, the devoted. Pulsing through the heart of the lover is gratitude. The lover appreciates and experiences the world through the senses, reveling in beauty, song, art, music, sense, and sensuality. 
This energy awakens at the tip of our tongue when we taste the sweetness of honey. Kiss a lover or speak gentle words to a child. The lover lingers in foreplay, aroused not by getting there, but by, slow, uh, but by the slow merging of self and another. This energy is usually experienced for short periods of time, as in order to feel it, we must fully be present and awake, with no expectations or rules about what should be. Rather, the lover is in awe of what the world presents, reveling in the glorious details, grateful to savor every last drop of life's offerings. And this pearl, there's like, there's pearls throughout our cards, I noticed. Um, when light, connection, expansion, devotion, awe. When dark, indulgence, attachment, obsession. Go deeper, contemplate Aphrodite, Krishna, and Radha, or Radha. When you hold someone's gaze for several moments, you'll feel the lover within you awaken. It is common to seek the lover in another. The true gift is finding the lover in yourself. The lover archetype is present everywhere, not just where conventional forms of pleasure and beauty are found. The lover's awe is unconditional. All right, let's read King. Oh no, medallion. Ha, almost, almost skipped it. Okay, medallion. The amulet, the talisman, the heirloom. The passing on of sacred objects is an ancient ritual within families, between lovers, and in tribes across the globe. We gift jewels, treasures, keepsakes, and mementos of all kinds. Some of great material value, others that hold emotional resonance, and still others with both. Yet when these gifts are bestowed upon us, it is important to recognize that they may bind us to an unspoken agreement or promise. When the medallion card appears, beware of how the objects you hold dear may be embedded with unconscious energy or expectations. Materials hold consciousness, and it's time to reconcile the vibration of the objects around you. What do you covet and collect? And why? Is there an object you have held on to for years that you're ready to release? Perhaps it is time to reach for the medallion that aligns with your deepest values. When light, upholding tradition, protecting, honoring. When dark, burdensome inheritance, habituation. Go deeper. Ancient Egyptian scarab amulets. Imagine if you and your family, school, or social group had a crest, emblem, or amulet. What would it be? Draw it. Do you believe that objects contain supernatural properties? When have you experienced this to be true? That time me and my mom accidentally found a relic from another, like, you know, land from across the world and we accidentally switched places and my soul was in her body and hers was in mine. <laughs> oh, that was crazy. It's Freaky Friday. Okay, the king. My knees. I'm sitting on my legs on this couch and, like, my, my legs feel like they're about to snap in half. <laughs> the king. The ruler. The commander. The emperor. If our lives are imagined as a kingdom containing the entire spectrum of human experience, the king presides over it all. Through the lens of the king, we assess the state of our land, make decisions, and rule accordingly. Therefore, the king must be thoroughly and regularly, regular, regularly, regularly vetted. Excuse me, belching. <laughs> So as to avoid corruption. Sorry, 
The king must be thoroughly and regularly vetted so as to avoid corruption. Like the leadership in my state that we were talking about the last couple of days. Recognize, because the governor that brought this up for the vote has actually been dressed in drag himself. Recognize the dual nature of the king. He is either seated in benevolence and strength, guiding you toward peace, or he is oppressing the weak out of a need to control. There's not much middle ground. Some think of the king as the ultimate expression of the ego. Yet the great kings of mythology and history serve from an egoless place. They take their throne with grace and humility, knowing the divine uses them as a channel to heal deep and long-standing discrepancies in the kingdom. When light, benevolence, divine leadership, service, nobility, when dark, oppression, misuse of power, corruption, go deeper with the Dalai Lama, Indra, Richard III, and Macbeth. Once the king's relationship to divinity, sorry, once the king's relationship due to divinity is broken or challenged, he often acts from a place of fear, scrambling to uphold his image and power. So the, when his divinity, when his relationship to divinity is broken or challenged. The king is necessary. He is a bridge between the eternal and the day to day. It is also said that it is necessary for the king to die. This is the death of the ego. All right, interesting. Jesus being the king of kings. It's very symbolic. All right, you guys, I'm tired. This uh, anchor message is now 51 minutes. My apologies, but I think there was a lot to cover today. So, yeah, and then I'll see y'all tomorrow. I'm going to be filming our full moon workshop, but I've got to film it before work. And sometimes, like, the edit, like, and the upload just takes too long before I get to, before I have to leave the house. So I'm hoping that I can get our workshop uploaded before I leave for work tomorrow. But if not... It's okay, you can still watch it after the fact for the next few days and it still will be relevant. So don't worry about that. And I'm gonna try my best to get it, to get it finished and uploaded in a timely fashion. All right, y'all be good. Uh, be good out there and be good to your servers. Ciao.